Hey, what's up everyone? Alex here. Um, I thought I'd just take the time right now to actually work through some of uh, the Mini Project 3 lab, which is also lab number 8. Um, I haven't actually um, finished building this. I saw the code and I kind of worked with it on John, but um, I haven't actually worked through this lab at all, this mini project, so I thought I'd just uh, kind of get started and see if I could figure it out and also make a video tutorial for you guys to to use as a guide when you're doing this mini project. So um, I just unzipped the files right there and I opened everything up in TextMate. And uh, let's get started. So uh, I'm going to just drag the index file into Firefox so I can have it refresh. And, um, whoops, that's weird. Let me try that again. Okay, there we go. And, uh, just a quick FYI, or let me just do a brief tangent on FYI. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to get Firebug really quick because uh, when you're using JavaScript, it's nice to have some kind of debugging tool. Without it, you're just going to be basically lost um, because your browser is not going to tell you if, if anything is broken. It just Things just won't work correctly, and you're going to kind of have to go through your code and guess or double check a bunch of things. Um, and it's really a pain, so Firebug makes... Um, developing in JavaScript and even HTML and CSS super super easy so uh, you, you do need Firefox for this when you open up Firefox you can go ahead and install Firebug by going into uh, tools I think add-ons get add-ons and then you can just search for Firebug and um, let's see see all results and then you can just go ahead and click add to Firefox here and um, you just click install now. I already have it installed so I'm not going to click install now um, but you guys should if you don't have it installed and what you can do is once Firebug is open when you go to a new web page in the bottom right hand corner you'll see a little Firebug icon and you can click that and uh, a number of things pop up uh, I think actually you have to enable some things for uh, Firebug when you first get it because it's not enabled by default what you want to do is under console, let's go ahead and check everything that I have checked. Um, and you can see it's going to show us JavaScript errors, XML errors, CSS errors, network errors, things like that. Uh, HTML, you can see what I have checked as well. Same thing for CSS. Oh, there's nothing there, so let's see script. There you go. DOM, that's what I have. Um, and network, that's what I have as well. I just have it enabled basically. And um, what you can do actually with Firebug is you can inspect elements on the web page. So I can actually just click this button here, and this will allow me to inspect an element on the page basically. Um, it'll let me select different elements. So if I select this bird over here, it's going to actually find the corresponding code in the HTML, and it's also going to tell me um, any CSS that's linked to that, to that uh, element that I found. Um, and it looks like there isn't any CSS set up right now, so we probably have to do that. Um, but once you do, it'll show up on the right-hand side uh, in Firebug, and you can see whatever you know attributes are uh, tied to that element, and you can actually modify them um, in Firebug also. So it's it's really a great tool. Okay, so back on topic. Let's see what we have to do. Um, okay, part one says we have to set up and link code. Okay, so we got to link JavaScript and we got to link CSS. All right, let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is all going to go into the head, and I actually don't remember. Um, I, I I don't memorize the code for linking things, so I'm just going to go to the decal uh, website, and I'm just going to basically uh, copy and paste the way that we're linking. Uh, the script files and the CSS files from here. Okay, so just copy, copy that, paste it in here, and my antivirus is going, which I don't want, so let me kill that. Okay, and then um, what do we have to link it to? Do not modify that CSS. Okay, just going to change this CSS, and for JavaScript, um, we got to link jQuery time ago and my code. So I'm just going to make two more of these. 
and uh, let's start typing this in jQuery 1 4 3 min dot js and this one is jQuery dot time ago dot js this one is uh, my code .js. okay and uh, once we do that I'm gonna go back in here refresh the page and see if anything happened which it didn't look like it did hmm, that's strange let me double check style sheets do not modify CSS that's right this all looks right hmm okay, let me try that again alright so uh, like I said I didn't go through this beforehand but um, let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, so what's going on is um, I'm using root relative links, and because it's on my file system, on my computer, it's not on the server, um, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to do relative links, so I changed it. What I did was I removed these these forward slashes, and then what, what that's going to do is it's going to reference the JavaScript files um, just from where the index file is, oops, where the index file is, so it's just going to go, you know, JavaScripts and then to the files that I want instead of going to the document root first and then going to these files. Okay, so the CSS definitely got loaded correctly. You can check actually if your JavaScript got loaded correctly by um, just executing some jQuery specific um, commands in the console. So down here, uh, this is actually the uh, JavaScript console and you can type whatever you want. So I can run um, just vanilla JavaScript. This is going to just pop up an alert box with one inside of it. Um, that wasn't j jQuery specific. I can do one that's jQuery specific. Um, and, you know, what we could do is we could just try and, uh, you know, return some kind of element on the page. So, oops, maybe there's no image on the page. Let's see. Hmm. Is this an image? That is an image. Strange. Let me see. Um, geez, let me see. Is this being linked correctly? jQuery dash one point four point three dot min js. That looks right. Oh, sorry. No, it doesn't. I have cache in here. Okay. All right. Okay, now let's try that again. So let's try and select that image on the page, and we found it. So because we can find, we can um, run this correctly, and it returns something. It means that basically our jQuery is linked um, successfully. And to just check that the my code is linked successfully, um, inside my code, uh, we can just type something in here. So we'll just do you know an alert box, refresh the page, and it fires. So that means that at least the the HTML file and the JS file are talking to each other. Okay, so let's go back to the documentation and see what we have to do. So we just did part one. Um, part two says add two inputs, add two inputs, text input and text area to the input form. Okay, and uh, the name input should have ID form name, the text area should have ID form message. All right, so let's go back into our HTML and uh, let's see if we can find this form. So here's the form. And there's a label, um, and I'm assuming next to these labels we should just put the input field. So I'm just going to start input type equals text because it's a text box, um, and I think he wanted to give me an ID of name, or he wanted me to give it an ID of name. So ID equals name, um, and in here we're going to go ahead and create a text field, which is actually text area text area and he wanted me to give these IDs form name and form message um, which is fine but uh, this actually won't validate right now so let me let me do what he says and I'll explain why it shouldn't exactly be that so form message for the bottom one oops and what is this form name for the top one name 
Um, and the reason why this is not entirely correct is uh, these label tags, actually when you specify the for field, um, it, so okay, let me take a step back actually. Labels basically label inputs in your form. So semantically it says, you know, what this lab or what this text field is for. Um, and in this case it says that this text field is for uh, the name, you know, for the name of, I guess, our name um, as we, users, the name of our name because we're the user that's going to be posting something to the Twitter page. But anyways, um, the way that you actually specify that this label corresponds to this input is with this for field. And the value in this for field, I believe, should actually be the same as the value in this ID field. So I'm going to just go ahead and change that really quickly. Um, it shouldn't actually keep you from completing this project, but uh, I believe this is, is the valid uh, HTML to have. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see what else we have to do. Part 2 says, in p.submit, add submit and cancel button. Okay, so in the paragraph that has a class submit, add a submit and a cancel button to give some control over the form effects. Okay, let's go ahead and see uh, what we can do. And I have bad memory, so... What is he talking about? What is he talking about? P dot submit. P dot, okay, here's P dot submit, and he wants me to add two buttons. Um, one button, a submit button, and a cancel button. Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to be JavaScript, so I'm just going to use the pound sign for href because it's not actually going to link anywhere. And I'm just going to call this submit, and I'm going to call this. Uh, what was this supposed to be? Cancel. Okay. And um, let me actually give this an ID because we're probably going to need it later, I'm assuming. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have created them. So I'm just going to say submit button and cancel button. Okay. Uh, let's see, in the following, when I mention hide show, I'd like you to use jQuery effects of your choosing to exhibit these states. Go into mycode.js and uh, start off by initializing some variables and constants. Okay, so the key has to be that. Let me move this so I can see both. Um, okay, so nice. So he actually has labels here that say where things go. So this should be var key. So the first thing, one that I'm doing is uh, I'm going to set this key value, or I'm going to store it in a variable so I can use it later. So var key equals t w w d d or sorry w d d e r Twitter. I think that's right. Is there no space? There's no space. Okay. And uh, we're also going to do another variable called last refresh equals new date. 2009 0 1 0 0 0 Okay. So let me just explain these lines really quickly. So oops, this is actually wrong. Sorry. So these should appear or this should appear inside of a, inside quotes because it's a, a string literal. So we just want the actual value of this. So just in JavaScript when you're doing the value of something. Um, so so that JavaScript doesn't interpret it as a variable name, you have to just put it inside quotes. So I'm setting key to the to this quoted string, and what this allows me to do is later, um, when we're making the actual AJAX calls, we can we we're gonna need to send this uh, key to the server so that so that the server is gonna um, accept our request, and that's just kind of like a security thing that we built in. So that not normal, so not random people are posting to our our uh, our Twitter server that we created for you guys. But what this what this allows us to do is when we set it just here, we can now reference the value of this anywhere.